Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. My name is Daniel Cervantes, and this is Christian Adventure Gamer. Today we're going to be taking a look at uh, a really great game I found at Gen Con last year. Uh, I wasn't able to purchase there because I think it sold out the first day, but I'm sure many have heard this game if they have not played this game. This game is called uh, Clank. It's a deck building uh, adventure, is what it says, a deck building adventure. And this game is is kind of unique in its own. I don't think there's any other games out there like this one. Uh, it combines uh, going into a dungeon with deck uh, building, uh, and we'll take a look at it and, and see what I mean. I mean, because I, I, as I say that, I'm thinking, well, doesn't Thunderstone do that? But uh, not like this game does. So let's dig in it and uh, take a look. I got the game board all set up and the rule book here for Clank uh, has a beautiful illustration of how the game board should be set up. Okay, so and the rules are very, very simple. There's not a whole lot to worry about with this game. And there is a backside to this board to make it a little more random. And so when you first set up the board, you have when you first set up the board, you have these treasures here that go for the market and so I put them there so that way the person would know how many is there you put two uh, small or minimum secrets here and two major secret or one major secret here randomly and there is extra so you put those back in the bag and then you have the artifacts which they're allocated here um, but then you just put that symbol there you probably could do it random I don't see why it wouldn't hurt anything to do it random because they give you a backside that looks like a treasure chest. Okay. And when you first start the game, you have to determine how many players you're going to be playing with. And so we're going to be playing with two. So we'll put the dragon marker, really neat wooden dragon marker, put it on two players. And that's where it's going to be starting. Then the dragon bag, you'll take all the dragon wooden pieces here, and put them in the bag, like so. Okay. Up top of the board, which I will move the camera so you can see. So at the top of the board here, you start with your meeples, and then, you know, these are the major secrets, and minimum, minimum, minimum secrets, and then it says starting with the sneakiest player, that's who goes first, it says, and these are called clank cubes. So the sneakiest player goes first. They stick three of their, let's say the yellow person goes first. They're gonna stick three of their clank cubes here. And then the second player to go takes two of their cubes and sticks it in the clank area. So they take their clink cube and stick it in the clink area. So let's back out. Here we have our starting decks. Ten cards. And I don't know if you guys can see or not, but the we've I've only played this game twice, and there's some rough edges on the card. The got the cards seem like it's a very good stock, um, but it's got some really good wear already. And so I can see this game getting a lot of play, so it's gonna be very important to sleeve my cards. 
And so I'll take five cards from my deck to start my hand. Alex has some too. And we also take one of our clank cubes and put it on the life tracker here. Okay. Now when I zoom in, I'm going to show you some of the components of the board. <clears throat> all right, so here we have a major secret. Uh, we Those are all randomly shuffled and placed, and there's going to be some extra, so you put those back in the bag. And then we have some minor secrets here. Uh, th again, those are just randomly shuffled, and you put two on each spot. And we have the artifact, and then the board actually shows you the picture of the artifact would go there. However, you could do this randomly. And so the object of the game is to go into the dungeon get at least one artifact and all the other treasure you can and get out before the dragon kills you. And I'll explain how that happens. Okay, and then in the center of the board, let me zoom back out a little bit, there's a market area. In the market area, a player can buy a key which unlocks doors here, or you can buy a crown, or you can buy a backpack. A backpack would allow you to have an additional artifact. Okay, And then the monster symbols here on the board are how many damage a player will take moving through that space unless they have a sword on a card. So like this pickaxe, for example, if I can get it. Or I'll just grab this mercenary. So the mercenary has these two red swords. So I'd be able to take on one of the monsters without taking any damage. Or take on two monsters like here or here without taking any damage. Okay, at any given time a monster, or a, a, not a monster, a player can fight the goblin. So if you go into a room and it's empty, at any given time you can fight a goblin. You just need two swords to fight it and when you defeat it you get one gold. Okay, and so on my starting hand I have a sidestep which lets me move one space. I have a scramble lets me do one space. And uh, I have these value points here, my spending. I have burgles that have one each and then a scramble has one and a boot. And so when we move, let me zoom in a little bit more. When we move, it costs one boot to move from one area to the next. However, if there are footprint symbols on the board, then you'll have to spend an additional boot to move to that area. And I'll kind of zoom in and show you some more components of the board. So up top here is where we start with our meeples. Alex, can you point to them? Okay, and then from there we would move down one room. And then we have to enter the dungeon and try to find as much treasure, get an artifact, and get out. Okay, and I'm going to show you another area of the board. Okay. Now over here we have the clank area, that's where the clank cubes go. So again, the clank cubes are like the little yellow or green or red or blue squares. Then we have a dragon bag. And that one has dragon clank cubes in it. For a two player game, the dragon symbol, little wooden token here, is going to go on the two player mark. For a three player and four player, the dragon goes there. So we go here. And then when we do a clank, or a dragon attack, so then we reach in the bag and pull out those, those cubes. And I'll show you how that's done when we get to that part. Okay. Uh, when we are out of the dungeon, we get this victory coin thing here. It's worth two victory points in the game. And throughout the game, you can gain gold. So there's a five piece and singles. Some of the cards down here have cost values, and that's how you purchase those cards. So this costs three, but it gives you two and a boot. This mercenary costs two and gives you one victory point, in, or not victory point, one spending value and two swords. And then down here is the line. This is where you buy all the other stuff. So you have your standard items here, and then the goblin you can always face. And then this is where all the other items or monsters appear. And so once you take a card, you'd have to replace it at the end of your turn. And then if you draw a card that has this symbol on it, that's when the dragon attacks. And we'll show you when that happens. Alright, Alex, are you ready to begin? Yes, I am. 
All right, so I'm gonna zoom up top so that way we can kind of see what's going on closer to our meeples until we can get down further in the dungeon. So I will go first. So I'm gonna use my two cards here to move. So I'll use one to move here and the other one to move here. Then I have to stop because I don't have any more boot symbols or, you know, the move symbols. But I have three to spend. Sorry, I have four to spend. So I'm going to get this teleport. So I pick up the teleport card. It says, use teleport to an adjacent room. And then I replace that card from the, from the line. The Kobold Merchant. And then that's the end of my turn, so I draw five more cards, and then Alex goes. Well, all I can do is buy something. And I have five points to spend. So I'm going to get the elven boots. You don't have any move? No. Okay, then you have to replace it. Then we'll put a sneak down. I have two stumble which make me put two clank on the clank area. So I'll go ahead and do that. First I'm going to move the camera. So I'm going to put two clank in the clank area. Discard those, because I have to play those cards, and I have three to spend. So I'm going to buy a, an explore. Then I'll shuffle my hand and draw a new hand. Sorry, I'll shuffle my deck and draw a new hand, and then it's Alex's turn. So I'm going to move um, twice, and then I have two stumbles, so I'll put two clanks into the clank area. And then I have two points to spend, which I'm going to get the mercenary. Okay. Okay, so there was something that I missed that I want to clarify now. So the purple banner cards, like this teleport, actually does not go into my deck. So actually what would have happened is that I would have used it right away. And so uh, I should have used it right away and then discarded it. So it says use teleport to an adjacent room. So that would have actually put me here, which I would have taken one of these tokens. And so that was my mistake. Okay, and so then that would just give me one card to draw. So now I have a stumble. So I put that in the, in the clank area. Then I have an explore. So it gives me two boots. And it gives me four to spend, plus I have the two from that secret space. And again, that was my mistake. All purple bannered cards like that get used right away. They're called devices. And these are called skill points. I keep calling them uh, purchase points or uh, buying points, but they're, they're called skill points. So the skill points are the blue number here. That's what you use to buy with. I keep calling them uh, buy points or purchase points, but they're actually called skill points. And so then, with my two boots, I'm going to move to here and pick up this secret... Um, this larger secret or major secret and it shows a picture of cards on it and so on the back of the book it tells me what that means it says flash of brilliance immediately draw three cards then return the token to the box okay well I can do that so I'm gonna do one two three and that would get returned to the box so I'm just gonna set it over here then I have another stumble so then I'm going to put another clank cube in the clank area. And I use my two boots to move, but then I have a scramble. So I'm going to use my scramble to move here. Okay. And since I don't have any swords, I'm going to have to take one damage. So I'd move my 
little lit, my little uh, token here on the on the life track to the next square, which you'll see when I when I back the camera out. But then I have two, four, six to spend, so I'm going to get a flying carpet. And then a master burglar. And then Alex will go. So I have three boots. So I'm going to move here. But then I'm going to move into. Well, as soon as you get to a cavern, you have to end your movement. So even oh. if you have an additional boot, you have to stay there for the end of your turn. Okay. Well, I have four to spend. Okay, so what would you like to buy? So now that we're trying to make our way down the, the board some, I'm going to back the camera out and move it. I'm going to get the elven cloak. What's that do? Um, this is... Minus two clank. Draw a card. Okay, so when you get a card that says minus two clank, you'd actually remove clank from the clank area. However, if the clank goes into the bag, then you're out of luck. And so the clank goes in the, the bag when a dragon attacks. All right, then it's my turn. Well, I have another stumble. So there goes another clank in the clank area. Oh, we forgot. After Alex took that card, I was supposed to replace her card. So there, Alvin Dagger. So I put a clank in that clank area. I got an awful lot of clank in there. Uh, and then I got one boot. And so with my boot, I will move, I'll move here, and I'll take another damage. And then I got four buying, or four skill points to use. So then I will get I'll get a Master Burglar. And then I'll reveal the next card. Move silently. That allows a player to move twice and remove two clank. That's a good card to have. And then it's Alex's turn. Well, I have two stumbles, so I have to put two clanks into the clank area. And then I have three points to spend. Okay, what would you like to get? I think I'm going to get Move Silently. I wanted that card, but that was awfully nice. Alright, so then it's my turn. So I can actually move. Um, what I'm going to do I'm going to use my stumble for my clank just to get it out of the way and then I have a flying carpet. And So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fly into this cavern and then the magic carpet also says that it gives me two boots so I can move again as long as I don't go through an area that has the boots and it says that uh, ignore monsters in tunnels and you don't have to stop in crystal caverns or crystal caves. And so I'm just going to fly right into this market. I'm going to take this minor secret. It gives me two gold. Okay, so I'll just put that over there. And Alex, could you hand me two gold? All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm in the market, the book has on the back field reference guide. And so it shows me what I can buy in the market. But I only have two gold, so there's nothing I can actually buy. So, we forgot to replace that card again when you bought that card. So, please remember that when you see that, when you take a card to refill it. And also, this new card that came up says Boots of Swiftness. So, Boots of Swiftness 
gives you three boots. However, to buy it, it says acquire. So I need to spend a boot in order to get it. Plus the additional five skill points. But I have three to buy with. So I will buy a mercenary because I need some swords. And then I'll reshuffle and draw. And then Alex's turn. Well, I have stumble, so I need to do that. And then I have four points to spend. So I think that I'm going to get the Elven Dagger. And now that you bought that dagger, you can replace the card. What is it? It is Treasure Hunter. Alright. And it's my turn again. Well, I got a lot of boots this time. So, my hand, I got a flying carpet, sidestep, and explore. So I'm going to use my explore to move into this part of the market. And then I will use my sidestep to move up here into where the artifact is. I'll take that, put that in my play area. It's worth five victory points, so now that I have an artifact. And then I have a, a flying carpet. And I don't have to stop in the caves. So I'll move back down here to take this major secret. And so I get to heal, I think, two. Check the, the guide. It says potion of greater healing. It says heal two damage. So I'm going to use to heal two damage. And I'll discard it. Now I have four victory points to spend. Or skill points. I have four skill points to spend. So I'm going to get treasure hunter. It says replace a card in the dungeon row. So when I play this card, I can do that. It also gives me two swords and two victory points. Or two skill points. Lucky key. I think we're getting awfully lucky here because we're not drawing any dragon attacks. Mm -hmm. Which the dragon's name is Nikki, and Nikki doesn't like adventurers stealing her treasure. Alright, then it's Alex's turn. Alright then. Well, first, um, I have the elven boots and the elven cloak. And. Um, the Elven Cloak lets me take away two Clank. Okay, so then you take two Clank from the Clank area. And both cards let me draw a card. Okay, so you get to draw an extra card. I'd get to draw two. Wouldn't I? Yes, one okay. for each card that told you to draw one. Alright then. Well, I have a stumble, so you put one back. And I also have move, si move silently, which lets me take away two clink. Um, and then I can move through there. So, what are these called? What's it say? Oh, so that is a dragon egg. So that, can you show the camera? So she has found a dragon egg. And so that's worth three victory points at the end of the game. However, something I forgot to do, so I'm going to move the camera. Something I forgot to do, so I'm going to move the camera, is that when I found my artifact, I was supposed to move the dragon icon up one space. Okay, and now that she found the dragon egg, we move it up again, which causes the 
there to be four cubes drawn when the dragon attacks. And it'll keep going up until it gets to the five. So the more clank we make, the more likely we are to get attacked. All right, is now anything else? Um, and then I can move again. And then I'd have to stop there. Okay. And then I have four points to spend. So, I think I'm going to get the pickaxe. Nice. What's that do? Gives you two gold? Yes. And? I've, gives um, you two attack points? Yes. Another lucky coin. Alright, then it's my turn. So now that I have an artifact and some gold, I can try to get out. However, I don't have enough boots to move, so I'm kind of stuck there. So I'm just going to fight a goblin, because I have my mercenary that gives me two hit points. And so then I'm going to get one gold coin, please. And then I got a clank. My clank in the clank area. And that gives me four points to buy with. And so I'm going to go ahead and buy a sneak. And then I will buy a kobold merchant. Then at the end of my turn, I will replenish both those. We're getting really lucky here. And then Alex's turn. All right then. So I have a stumble. So I'm going to clink in the clink area. And then I can't do anything with the pickaxe. We would I get the two gold? Yes. Okay. You can take the two gold. But you can you can fight a goblin to get one gold since you have two swords. Well then I guess I'll do that. Okay. And then get another gold because I have two swords. Mm-hmm. And then I have three points to spend with. So I think that I'm going to get the silver spear. Mm, nice. And we'll replenish that. And it's a cleric of the sun. And to acquire it, you have to lose a life. It's very important to pay attention to those acquires. Mm -hmm. Alright, so now my turn. I don't have any boots to move, so I'm kind of stuck there. And then I have a master burglar. So, and let, first, I want to play scramble or stumble. I'm going to place a clank in the clank area. And then I'll play a burgle. And it says, trash a burgle in your play area or discard pile. So I'll just put that up here because that's trashed. Which gives me two. So then I have three, four, plus two attack points. So I'm just going to take out another goblin. So if you can give me a gold coin, please. And then I'm going to get a Cleric of the Sun. So I'm going to lose one life. I should have pulled the top off and played on the gaming side of the table. I'm going to put that down there. And that's the end of my turn. So then I'm going to reveal a card. Another Cleric of the Sun. And then Alex's turn. Alright then. So I have a stumble. So I'm going to put a clank in the clank area. And then I'm going to move one over here. And then I have the Elven Cloak, which lets me draw a card and take two clanks away from the clank area.
And then I'm going to fight a goblin. And since I have two swords, I would defeat it and I'd get a gold. Yep, nice. And then I have four points to spend. So... I think that I'm just going to get an explore. Okay. So then on my turn. Again, I have a flying carpet, so I will move up here and completely avoid the monster. Then I have four burgle, so I'm going to get four skill points to buy with. And so I will buy I guess I'll buy another cleric and lose a health. And then I will also buy this lucky coin. Treasure map and tunnel guide. Now honestly I can say that I randomly shuffled that deck. And so I'm really surprised we have not found a dragon attack yet. So then it's Alex's turn. So I have the elven boots and the elven dagger and that lets me draw a card. Which I'm going to have to shuffle my deck because I am out of cards. Spend a boot, and I'm going to move here. Okay. And then I have a move silently, which lets me take away two clanks. I'm going to fight a goblin. Okay. So you get another gold coin. Which since I have five ones, I'm going to take a five. Okay. And then I have five points to spend. So I'm going to get the Brace. Bracers. Bracers of Agility. Okay. Does that have an acquire on it? Um, no. Alright. But it lets me draw two cards. So then we have a shrine. And then what do I... You take that. Alright then. Oh, you move to this room? Okay, I move to this room? No, did you move through that room? Up no. this one? No. Oh, okay. I thought maybe you came down this way. Sorry. And so when you see an arrow like this, that means it's a one way. So, in order to get one of these shrines, you'd have to come this way, but you're fine. Yeah. Okay, sorry. So, do I see what I get? You, yeah, you can flip it over, you can show it. Okay. It's yours. Oh. So, she found a golden banana. Alright, and then it's my turn, right? Yes. Alright, so, I have a stumble. So I put one clank on, but then I have a, uh, a sneak, so it says remove two clank. So thankfully I get to remove some now. So put that there and it gives me one skill point. And then I have two more boots because the sneak gave me one boot, so I have three boots total. So I'll move one here, take this, so I get two gold coins.
And then with the other two boots, I'll move up to this cavern, trying to make my way out. And then I have two swords, so I'm going to go ahead and take out a goblin. If you would please give me a gold coin for taking out the goblin. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then I have two, three, four points to buy with. Um, and I will do the shrine, which says I can either get one gold or heal one life. And so I'm just going to heal one life. And I'm also going to buy a tunnel guide. And some of these cards have victory points. So the green number at the top of the card is the victory points they're worth at the end of the game. So then there's a dead run. And a dead run again. And then now it is Alex's turn. We'll have a stumble. So I'm going to put the clank in the clank area. And then... I'm going to move right there. Um, are you allowed to, like, attack more than one goblin at a time? Or can you only do one? That's a good question. Let me see what the rules say. It says, each player may fight it multiple times each turn, earning its reward each time. Alright. Well then, I'll attack two goblins, which I'd get two gold. Okay. And then I have four points, four points to spend. So one thing I noticed, and I just want to clarify right now, is that the silver spear had an acquire cost. So, and what was that acquire cost? Um, a sword. Okay, did you use a sword to buy it? Yeah. Okay. Make sure I thought it was a heart from here, so okay. Go ahead. Um Oh, and you got an artifact, so the dragon goes up one. I'm going to get the dead run. Okay. Oh finally, the dragon attacks. So then we're going to put all these in the bag, and then we draw four out. You feel confident? No. Shake, shake, shake. All right, so reaching into Nikki's bag, pulling out four cubes without looking at them. So I got two right now. I'll pull out two more. All right, well, no luck for me. So I lose three. One, two, three. And the black, nothing happens. So those get discarded. <laughs> and is that the end of your turn? Yes. All right. So then I'll go. And so then I'm going to use a magic carpet to move two. And plus my explorer, so it gives me three, so then I'm going to move out of the dungeon. Okay. And then I have four victory points. But I don't need, or skill points, so I don't need to use them because I don't have to buy anything else. But I have two gold, card, gold points coming, so I'll just go ahead and take the two gold points. So on my next turn is when the dragon will attack. And these plus symbols here means that I would draw an additional cube from the bag. Alright, so then Alex, your turn. Alright then. Well, well, actually, this doesn't move there yet, so this goes here. Then on my next turn it goes there. I'll stumble. Thank you. Yep. So Clank would go in the Clank area. And then I'd get that black I'd get the Clank back because of the Elven Cloak. Which lets me take away two clanks, but I only had one there. And then also lets me draw a card. I'm going to move into there, and I have 
four points to spend. So I'm going to get another dead run. All right. So what happens now? So I'm going to go ahead and move the camera up. All right. So then now my person will go here, and then a dragon attacks will happen. And so I'm pulling out. Four. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so what happens now is that since I'm out of the dungeon, I don't have to worry about mine, and then nothing happens with the black. So that's good. So then it's Alex's turn. I need to shuffle my deck. Alright then, so I am going to go in here because I have two boots, which was from a dead run, and I have another dead run. And what does dead run say? Um, oh, plus two clank, so Let's can you put four? Yes. Thank you. Here, just put it in my hand. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to go in there. Which, what does that mean? That means that you, if you don't have a sword, you take a damage. Okay. Well. And take I'll one take damage. damage. Okay. And I have two points. I'll have two points to spend, so I'm just going to get a mercenary. All right. So then, now on oh. my turn. So we add three. Okay. Points. But I'm still going to get the mercenary. Okay. So what happens on my turn is that this goes up, and so now I draw a four plus one. So I'm drawing five. So I got four. I just need one more. So there's five. As you can see, nothing's going to happen. But however, my yellows and the black are coming out of the bag. And if Alex has any in the bag, she's uh, in danger. So now it's Alex's turn. Well, I have a stumble, so a clank is going to go into the clank area. Oh, these clanks should have went in the bag on the last attack. So, that was my mistake. Which then I just get it back because I have a move silently. And then I'm going to attack... You can attack a goblin. Yeah, I'm going to attack a goblin. Which I would get gold for. And then I'm going to move. And then I have only have two points to spend. So I'm just going to get a mercenary. Alright. Alright, then it's my turn again. So then my guy goes up one more. And if the marker moves to here and everyone's not out of the dungeon by then, everyone dies that's in the dungeon. So I draw two additional this time. So I'm drawing six. So I got five. 
Six. So now Alex takes the damage. It's not that bad though. It's only damage. Yep. So now it's Alex's turn. Alright then. Well. I have the Braces of Agility, which lets me draw two cards. Which I gotta stumble. But that wouldn't do anything because I have the Elven Cloak. Okay. Which lets me take two, cl two clanks. Okay. And then I have the Elven Boots, which lets me draw a card. And then I will attack a goblin. Okay. To get a gold. And then, do I have to move? Or like, can I buy something and then move? You can buy something at the end of your turn. Oh. Or at the, so, if you need to buy something now, you could. Okay. But also, I forgot that once I got out, I was supposed to take one of these 20 point victory tokens. Victory point tokens when I got out. Well, then I guess I'm just going to move. Okay, then you get a 20 point marker. And then we count up all of our victory points and see who wins, which I'm pretty sure Alex has the most points because she has uh, go more gold than I do, her artifacts worth more. And so, before we do any cleanup and I get my final thoughts, I'll go ahead and let Alex give her final thoughts right now of this game. Um, it's very fun. It can be kind of competitive and then stressful in a way because you don't want to lose damage or have something bad happen to your character or meeple. But it's still fun. Um, it's an adventure game, which I really like fantasy and adventure games. And de like deck building games, those are also really fun. So when you have all those combined, it makes a really fun game for me to play. Now when you say fun, you say fun like fun. So, like is it fun or is it fun? It's fun. Okay, <laughs> just to be clear. So on a scale of 1 to 10, how much fun do you think you get from this game? Um, or how much fun do you have with this game? Probably an 8.5. 8.5? That's pretty high. What makes it that so high? Well, like is it I just said, the danger? Is it the competitiveness? Is it the, um, well, I the like push your luck? The push your luck and then also too, it's a deck building game, which I like those. And then the fantasy. Like that, it has fantasy built into it. Yeah. Um, well, it's a deck building game, and I really like those. And then also, too, it has fantasy built into it, which I like. I like fantasy things, so Harry Potter would definitely be a fantasy type okay. thing. Okay, so you like the theme? Yes. What about, What do you think of the quality of the game? The quality of the parts. And what do you mean by that? Like, are they, are they good components? I mean, like, you have wooden cubes, yeah. wooden meeples, or a thick cardboard, uh, game board, okay. uh, and then the cards. So what do you think of the quality? Because you just um, mentioned that you like the theme, which is the fantasy theme, so. Yeah. The quality is really good. I like how they use, like, for the cubes and the meeples, they have wood. And then the cards, they're okay, but... Like you said before, they're kind of worn already, even though we've only played it a couple of times. Okay. So one thing I wanted to show you before I clean up the whole game is something that didn't come up. And so in this deck, there's actually monsters that come out. And so there would be one. An animated door. So the dragon would attack on that one. To defeat it, you'd have to spend a boot. And this one also has to take... Or, sorry. When you defeat it, you get a boot, and it takes one sword to defeat it. And then a cave troll takes f takes four 
takes four swords to beat and also dragon atta would attack. And it says deep, fight only in the depths. So this would be the depths. Uh, and then when you defeat it, uh, you get three coins and draw two cards. And then the orc grunt, two swords and defeat, you get three coins. So I just want to show you those. And those would be, those would be fought just the same way the goblin did. And so now I'm going to take it back up top and give you my final thoughts. All right, well, I can say that I really like this game. It's uh, really easy to play, really easy to learn. I mean, like, I got the rule book here, and it's only a few pages long. Uh, and besides the inside pages here, the rest of the stuff is just simple, easy, not much there. And so this game is easy for anyone to, to, to learn. Uh, one thing I like about this game is that you can work with this game with, with autism kids depending on how far on the spectrum they are. If they are on the lower end of the spectrum, uh, you can uh, definitely use this game to teach them some, some uh, time management because once you go so far into the dungeon and then one person gets out, then it really comes a time crunch of don't waste your time in the dungeon, the dragon is coming, uh, you better move, and so forth and so on. Uh, the components of this game uh, really good quality stuff, as you've seen in the video. Uh, the meeples, I wish were miniatures or something, but I'm fine with the wooden meeples. Uh, and just all the different aspects of the game. The fiddliness of the tokens is the one thing I don't really care for, but it's there for a purpose. It, I mean, because you're in there delving, trying to get those tokens, which are treasures. Uh, I like the way they do the fighting system. You have the monster cards that you can do to fight, or you have the goblin uh, that you can fight. Uh, and then just the randomness of when the dungeon or the dragon is going to attack. Uh, if I could rate this game, I would rate it on a scale of five, probably a four and a half, uh, because it has good quality product. It, the artwork is beautiful on it. It's easy to learn, easy to teach, and you can use it with kids uh, with learning disabilities. You can use it with kids that are on the lower end of the autism spectrum. Uh, you can use it to build communication skills and social skills. And so, yeah, uh, that's my final thoughts. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, if we can get to 200 subscribers, we're going to have a giveaway. And there is a chosen giveaway as far as, like, what is going to be giving away. It will be a $25 gift certificate to uh, Miniature Market. So once we get to 200 subscribers, that's what we're going to give away to one of our subscribers. Uh, and also, uh, feel free to share this video. And again, thank you for tuning in. See you next time. Mm -hmm.